Hey guys, welcome to part two of building a blow through. Uh, we'll pick up right where we left off. So next up, we're going to change that linkage. Uh, this is the Holly Kit 2122. This is the high performance adjustable linkage. I hate the low performance adjustable linkage. <clears throat> I've never done one of these, so we're about to figure it out together. So we just discovered a, another bonus to the Barry Grant. Um, this hole here uh, is where you would put the one-to-one -one linkage. Um, on a standard holly, which is here, that hole is too small and you have to drill it. But this one on the Barry Grant is already the larger size, so we don't have to drill. And if you're using a standard holly linkage, apparently you have to cut this off here um, so it, for clearance. Now it says you can run these on the outside or the inside. So, um, doesn't look like there's a lot of room on the inside, but we'll see how it goes. So we're going to take the stock linkage off here, and I can't see, let me see if I can find a light. So we're going to take this stock linkage off, I can't really see very well here, so... Mm. So we got the linkage on, that kind of sucked, the little cotter pins are a pain in the ass. But we have our one-to-one -one linkage. It's not exactly one-to-one, -one. see it still has a little play, but it's as tight as it'll go. But you can kind of see that this, this now is not progressive anymore, it is basically one-to-one. -one. So there we go, I think we have our main body all set up. Alright guys, so now we're going to do uh, power valve channel restrictors, which is these here. This already has a reasonably sized one in it, but we're going to set these to um, 78s, 78 thousandths. Um, I did kind of the math on that. The, the way this math works is you take the area of these two and the area of the jets, and that's kind of the fuel flow through this main circuit. And in the back, we have a plug, so the area of the jets in the back need to be reasonably close to the area of that combined. Um, that way, you're fueling the same in the front and the back because we're using the block off. If we put a uh, another boost rest from power valve, then we'll, you know, probably drill the channel restrictors in the back one as well. Um, so we can kind of square the carb front to back. But that's what we're gonna do now, is we're gonna drill these channels. And the way I do these is you take a little drill bit and you can go into these channels. And you can kind of tell the angle and how deep they are. So this, this one is like this deep take just some masking tape and you can kind of go like this and go okay that's how deep it is a little masking tape on there and then we can match that up to how deep we need to drill again, I just put a little piece of masking tape So you can see we're going to drill about the same depth. Put 
this in the drill. And then you again check kind of the angle of these. drill. They are they're like 76 or so. This is the boost reference power valve. You can see it's adjustable on that side. Now I do need to check this carb. They need to be modified. Yes. I guess we're about to find out. So let me put a little a touch of Vaseline on the threads. Power valve in. All right, so power valve's in. Now we need to see if this actually works because sometimes these this is not a this is not as low profile as a stock power valve, so sometimes it'll hit this bump and you might need to clearance it. But it looks like we're good. Don't mind my neighbors. So I think we're good. We got the boost reference power valve out, and we'll put this tube on the other side, which is like a jet extension, but we'll need to trim that to the right length so let's go do that so there's our boost reference power valve installed it's got an extension tube which I kind of screwed up a little bit but I'm actually gonna put another tube on there with a bend in it um, so but that's on there for now so uh, because that has that extension tube we're gonna have to trim the center of this float so so I'm gonna pull that out real quick and trim that just with a knife, and we'll be all set. All right, guys, uh, so what we just did is put the power valve in. So this has channels of 76 thousandths, and it's got 83 jets in the back. Uh, and if you add the area of the 76 thousandths to the area of the jets, you get like 0.045 
something or other. I'll show you the uh, the chart in the house that I also got from the uh, Simple Stage guys. It's on their <coughs> YouTube channel. Um, hey y'all, so here's the um, <coughs> the chart that I got from the Simple Stage guys. Uh, this is available on their YouTube channel, which I believe is Titan 1500. But this is a cool little chart that gives you um, the area of a drill size and the decimal size. So you can figure out, like, we drilled the power valve channels to 76. So we take this number. And then you can go look at the jet sizes. Apparently this came from Holly. And jet size will give you the area and then you can do this type of thing where you can figure out the, the jet size and the power valve channel restrictor size. And you can get a number and then you can go look, if you're not using a power valve, you can find the similar number in this chart. So we went with 95s. So this number so then you end up with a square carburetor. You end up with the, the total area in the front is the same as the total area in the back. And if you look at the area that Holly says the jets are, the that should put 95s in the back. So we're gonna have 83s in the front with the power valve, 95s in the back without the power valve. And that should get us pretty square. All right, guys, uh, so next up, uh, our meeting rocks are done, our fuel balls are done. Next up, we're going to change the squirters. Uh, these have, like, standard gasoline squirters, and since we're going to 85, we're going to want more squirter than that. Um, so we can just take these out and see what we got. These have a little valve underneath them, so don't turn your carb upside down or you'll lose that little valve. <laughs> um, these are, I don't know if you can see that, but they are 30, I can't see. They are 31s. So we're going to change these out for 40, I think I bought 42s. So let's see what we got here. Squirters here. And I had kind of looked at ahead of time at what I thought it was going to take for E85. So these may not be right, but. Um, but these are, and these are marked on them. So yeah, these are 42s. These come with a different, uh, I think these are the higher flow screws. Forty-two's in it. So I think that's about we're gonna wrap it up for today. Uh, we'll go ahead and put the put the rest of it together, and that will be a good starting point. We're probably gonna have to play with the air bleeds here, and we might have to play with squirters. We'll probably have to change out the cams, but we'll do that when we get to that.
Right now I'm just going to put this, the rest of this together and we'll be done. Sorry guys, I thought I had a cool time lapse video of me putting this thing together, but uh, apparently I don't know how to use my phone. But it's basically just putting on the bowls and measuring blocks. So here it is assembled. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up. So we got ourselves a blow through carburetor. We're ready to ready to rock and roll. We still got a few more things to do to it, but I'll cover that in another video. We got to do the jet extensions and a few minor things, but for the most part, we're ready. So uh, next video, we'll probably be putting the intake and the carb on the car, and then we'll uh, figure out the plumbing and go from there. So thank you.